Hello, team. Good to see you. Very good to see you, too. Some friendly faces out there. Yeah, Dan. Uh, about 48 hours from the first weigh-in. Uh, I've had the weight in a long time. How are you feeling right now? Uh, weight cut easy. Jet lag hard. Like, that's, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Uh, yeah, people ask me, they're hammering about the, the, the weight cut and getting down to 45, but it's, it's actually the reverse of that. I'm getting progressively less jet lag so i'm feeling i'm getting closer to the way in and i'm feeling better and better it's having the complete reverse effect but yeah that's in the weight's in the back of my mind that's um that's easy work yeah do you think we're talking like too much about it or putting too much focus on it or do you do you expect that just given what you did at lightweight and you know the change and people like talking about this kind of stuff oh i can definitely understand it um you know you don't uh people don't see all of the stuff behind the scenes that's that's gone into it, uh, the kind of working with these professionals and the the scans and the evaluations and the discussions and you know I'm working with the best guys in the world, you know fight dietitian my dietitian back home Charles and Clint at the UFC Performance Institute like these guys are hands down the best in the world in this particular field. And so I've taken their advice. Like this is 100% with um, their assistance and with their guidance. So it's going to be as seamless as possible. So I like I'm a I consider myself like a, a just you're a professional, you're a consummate professional, and that's changed from like the first time that I was at featherweight. I was I didn't have the same level of professionalism because you can't as someone like that young and your motivation's like a little bit different. But it's different now when there's no when there's no one there when you're at home by yourself. I'm still a professional. I'm still eating what I'm supposed to be eating, sleeping when I'm supposed to be sleeping, which makes that easy. This is not easy, but the person that I am now and the professionalism that I bring to the sport now has made this easy. With that said, was the reason he moved up to lightweight in the first place from 45, was that more performance-based because it was kind of win one, lose one? Or was it because of the weight cut? It was getting too hard or a combination of both? Nah, there was... Um, yeah, like I play it pretty cool, but there's some other stuff that I have. There's a handful of people in that know the real reason in the world, but I'll keep that one to myself. <laughs> okay. But it was... Uh, yeah, it was kind of a fresh start, a fresh start. But a lot changed at that point in my career. You know, I was 3-3 three and three in the UFC. Um, but at that time, I'd been traveling around, training in different places. Also, when I made the move up to lightweight, I made the move back to New Zealand. I committed myself to city. I wasn't even training at city kickboxing when I um, was fighting as a featherweight. I, obviously, I tra was training with Eugene and new Eugene and my coaches twist and stuff like that. Um, but I wasn't training at City Kickboxing. The team I have now around me is is the best team in the world. So, yeah, I kind of look at that that first run at Featherweight as like my internship, that run at um, Lightweight as me getting the work experience, just taking any fight, fighting anyone, um, being put in all of these tough situations that kind of built a callus around me. But now I'm going back to featherweight as just a consummate professional with all of that experience, with all of that technical knowledge, with all of that, with having the best team in the world around me. So I'm going back to featherweight very confident. And if you can go in and beat Arnold in this you know, re-debut in the division, do you think that puts you higher than you ever were you know, in the previous round in this weight class? It'd be hard to deny who, whoever walks away from that fight with their hand raised doesn't move on to something very big doesn't move on to fighting an opponent in the top five like the, the belt is tied up for the rest of the year we got korean zombie um versus volk then max is waiting in the waiting in the wing so the the title is is uh held up so there's a couple of guys sitting there in the top five um that are going to be sitting there without a dance partner and and the winner of this fight beats one of those guys he's right there uh in the mix for the next title shot and last thing for me, um, you mentioned you know, great team around you and everything. When you look at Arnold and kind of study him, um, do you see something you know obvious that these other opponents who have been unable to beat him in the UFC so far aren't doing or something that you bring to the table that no one else has had as far as his opponents? Um, I feel like, yeah, that's, that's a difficult question because he's for 
But guys, he's fought, uh, like, mainly he's fought short, stocky wrestlers that try to take him down. Like, that's definitely not me. <laughs> so it's hard It's hard to compare uh, any one kind of opponent that he's been on. Like, he, he might be able to deal with a tall, rangy guy quite well, but we're going to have to... We're going to have to wait and see. But no, he's definitely well-rounded. He deserves the A5 win streak. He deserves the um, the ranking and the position that he has himself, has found himself in the UFC uh, and the momentum that he's on. It's definitely it's definitely warranted. Henry, uh, you talked about how you're dealing, working with all, all these nutritionists and these professionals, but you also, like you mentioned, the PI. You spent a lot of time in Las Vegas. Do you think you would have made the drop to featherweight if you didn't spend that long, prolonged time uh, at the PI after your last fight? It kind of... I think I would have. I think I would have. I've been, I've been sitting on this for a while. Mm -hmm. You could go back and... Um, you could go back and ask Eugene. It was about a year and a half ago that I, I first... So you got to think, you have to think, a year and a half ago, I first went to Eugene and I said to Eugene a year and a half ago, hey, I'm thinking about going down to, back down to featherweight. We need, you need to ask yourself, well, how long before that was he, think, he thinking about that before? Because I play things quite close to my chest. Um, so yeah, I'd been thinking about it even before then. And, and, and I've kind of had the realization and even the last couple of days that it was kind of my plan all along that I knew when I left the featherweight division, it wasn't the weight cut that made me leave the, the that's just an easy excuse. Um, it wasn't the weight cut that made me leave the featherweight division and, and look for a fresh start. Uh, I always knew when I was leaving that one time, at one point in time, I will be back. And then obviously you thought you've been thinking about the top 15 of lightweight for so long. How would you compare this top 15 of featherweight to the f t top 15 of lightweight that you just left? Yeah, like that's the funny thing about it. I don't even spend much time thinking about any of like this. It's the, they're just silly numbers next to names. So they're not, um, I don't sit there breaking them down. Even before, even before I call someone out, people were just like, oh, what have you seen studying him that's made you call him out? Nah, I just saw the nice little number sitting next to his name and I wanted it. That's that's the only reason I called him out. Uh, I won't really have a look at a guy until um, Sean Shelby sends me that name. Like that's, that's, when, that's when I'll take a bit of a closer look at it. But there's top guys in um, both divisions. The featherweight division has been on fire lately. There have been some pretty gigas, been... Calvin Cater's been a crazy fight. Max versus Yair's been a wild mess. Like there's been some, there's been some incredible. Dan Ige versus uh, Emma has been a that was a banger too. There's been some incredible fights. So it's not like I'm thinking, oh, I'll go down to featherweight. These guys, <laughs> these guys are the, these guys are just as tough as a challenge as the guys up at lightweight. And have you had that conversation with your teammate Alex? If you do make it up to that title fight, and he still is the champion. Nah, that's like uh, I've like talked to him since then, but it's, it, we're both on the same. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to. It. There's a lot of work to be done before that's even a conversation that that needs to be had. I've still got Arnold Allen. He's got Korean Zombie. Then he's got Max Holloway. Like the there's. It's so funny. That's a that's a good problem to have when you and your mate are so good that there's no one else <laughs> that you guys have to decide who is the best in the world. So I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about a future problem. I'm not gonna worry about a good problem to have. Uh Dan, just at the back here. I see you. <laughs> uh you mentioned obviously about Volkanovsky and Korean zombie. How do you see that fight going down? <laughs> Yeah, I just Korean zombie gets hit too much. Korean uh, Korean zombie gets hit too much. Volk gets hit too hard. You put two and two together. Korean zombies get knocked out. And of course, you said about um, previously about New Zealand restrictions being lifted. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that time was like, having to deal with restrictions, not being able to return home straight away after a fight? That's like a yeah. Once that got announced, that there was, oh, I could go home. And, and restrictions were lifted, it's like a huge weight off your shoulders. And it's something that I would say, like I had absolutely no control of, so there's no point. I, I tend to not, um, I tend to not worry at all about things I can't control because you can't control them. There's absolutely, you're just burning, you're just burning daylight worrying about it. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until they got lifted that I, 
kind of absorbed how much of an effect it was having. Like going when you're going into a fight, especially the type of fights that I get myself into, it's not uh, one or two days on the couch and then you're recovered. You know, sometimes it can take months to recover from these fights. So it's good to be at home, surrounded by friends, surrounded by family, surrounded by teammates, and your support network um, really strengthens you. So to be able to go out there, well, like uh, positions I was in, going going into fights, knowing that that might happen where you might take months to recover and then be facing four months, two months, three months uh, in a hotel room by yourself is... Uh, is a daunting task but to now be able to jump on a plane go see my baby go see my wife is uh yeah i'm I'm gonna get myself into a firefight like i'm not worried about none of that i can go out there and gunsling because i can go home after it and i don't have to worry about anything yeah because i was going to say you know how does that impact you mentally going into a fight knowing now that that weight is lifted off you oh free free is what it is there's there's so much more freedom like yeah as i was saying going into a fight and just thinking oh man i'm gonna have to like it's in the back of your mind obviously you're not it's not in the forefront of your mind but you're just thinking oh man i might i better not get into a fight like that because if i get into a fight like that this is really gonna suck but um now i can I can go out there and I, I'm, I'm free to get into a fight like that because I'm not worried. Once I'm at home and I'm sitting on my couch with my wife, my daughter, my friends are coming over, like it's, I can get through anything. And you know, with that being said, how do you see the fight going down on Saturday? That's the benefit of experience is that regardless of, regardless of what happens, I'm, I'm absolutely ready for it. Whether it's a knockdown drag out 15 minutes, like, man, put in a few of those, I can handle that. Whether I slip on a banana peel and I got to go through some adversity, I can deal through that. I've been with, I've been there before. That's easy. Or whether I go out there as I'm expecting and just purely outclass them, I'm prepared for that as well. Thank you. Hi, Dan. You're right. I'm well, mate. I'm always good. That's the answer. I'm always good. Great to hear. Um, so I just wanted to ask you: You face Islam Makhachev, Mike Chandler. Um, Poirier, Gilbert Burns, Edson Barboza, Paul Felder, some absolute killers. I just want to know, where do you rate Arnold Allen amongst those guys? Man, he's on a, he's on an A5 win streak. I saw uh, one of those things pop up, and that's, yeah, that's there's only Max Holloway that's ahead of him. And, you know, I saw Jose Aldo's win streak was only a six-fight win streak. So you'd have to say an eight-fight win streak puts him up there. He's the second longest win streak in featherweight history so that that is to be re- respected yeah he doesn't he just hasn't had that that name you know the guys that he's beaten have obviously been world class and incredibly talented but they just didn't have that 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 drawing power so it's yeah it's a win-win situation for the ufc either they get a guy on a win streak that that beats someone with some name value or they get a guy with some name value who i'm 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 taking that win streak. So after this, I'm going to be on a I'm going to be on a nine fight win streak. So I'm excited to to move on to the future on my nine fight win streak. So you are coming into this fight um, with a couple of losses. Um, do you feel a little bit of pressure because of that? But do you, or is it because you're at a featherweight, you kind of don't feel that pressure as much, and you're not really thinking about that? Again, the benefit of experience is that I have the pressure is like uh, pressure is like a tap. And and that can that can only come with experience. If I'm under too much pressure, I have the ability to control that and turn it down and process some things and and manage that pressure. But on the same hand, if I'm not feeling enough pressure, I also know the process to to turn that pressure up a little bit because you need that pressure. You need because when you have that pressure, you get the nerves and it brings out the best of you. That's that's when you do your best performances. So. Again, the benefit of experience allows me to, to control that pressure. And aside from fighting, and on a much lighter note, I did see on your Instagram earlier this week, you had a Cheeky Nando's. So I see you're getting used to British culture. Um, Cheeky just, Nando's me favour. We got it in New Zealand. We got it in New Zealand. <laughs> I wanted to ask, what spice do you normally get at Nando's? It's a, it's a very controversial. That's a very controversial. That's probably the most controversial question I've asked this week because of my answer. Now listen, hear me out. 
I go, lemon and herb, hear me out. Wait. <laughs> wait. I said, wait. I got lemon and herb, but then I get hot peri peri, the sauce, and then get a big pile of that and ketchup, stir that together. And then I dip my chicken in that combination sauce. You lost me. Don't on judge me. Uh, Don't judge me. I, I'm definitely going to judge you on that ketchup. But I was going to say, um, I hope you're used to the spice because I know there's a man on Saturday night who will definitely be bringing the heat. And again, on a much lighter note, I know the past two years has been incredibly difficult with you with the lockdown and stuff. So fighting aside, I really hope you get back to your family and you really enjoy the time Jeez, you have mate. with your family. Thank you. Dan down here. Um, I heard you. I heard you judging me. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, man. That's a monstrosity of a concoction. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that aside, um, you've had the benefit of fighting in New Zealand twice in your career, so you know the uh, the benefit a, a raucous home crowd can give a home fire. Are you expecting Alan to to benefit and raise his game because of that? And you were talking about raising up the pressure on yourself. Does that excite you? The the fact that you're going to be going in there and being that well the hangman by nature but the hangman on enemy territory yeah there's like there's always a complete balance to it of of being the villain before i've been yeah three three times i've fought um in my hometown and yeah there's there's a different balance to it. it 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 it's a crazy amount of pressure it's a crazy amount of pressure like you wouldn't believe after the foul one i was like, i ain't gone <laughs> it's 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 so it's so much pressure so when you're like the villain you can go out there and be a lot f there's there's no pressure everyone wants to see you lose so you can go out there be free be loose be sharp and and really um be yourself it does bring out the best of you all of that pressure training is is a lot more focused um you make a lot more um faster like mental jumps throughout that training camp and you're always every last session you're squeezing every last drop you can physically get out of it but man having having been at home from experience having 10,000 people that you know you've met all of those people you got your friends your family um you ain't never gonna live that down you get you get spark flat cold in front of all of those people till the day you die you ain't never gonna live that down that's 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 a lot of prayer. You're gonna be 50 years old at the pub, and someone's gonna someone's gonna bring that up in conversation. So you, that's a that's one that's one heck of a lot of pressure. It's gone well for me, but I'm I'm sure I'm glad it ain't me sitting in that spot that he's sitting in. So I'm excited to go out there and just be free. I, I'm feeling the right amount of pressure here with the move to Fedora. I'm feeling very excited. So yeah, I'm glad uh, better better him than me. Um, yeah, I had a question regarding, you know, you mentioned the pressure that comes with what you do. And, you know, you're one of the toughest fighters at 155 and, you know, staying, spending so much time away from your family. Where does, what keeps you going and where does that passion come from for you? Yeah, that's a funny one because it's just, I, I have trouble explaining it because I just can't stop like it's it's harder for me it's harder for me to put this sport down than it is for me to do it like that's that's the reality of the situation that's the funny thing about the whole situation it's harder for me to turn a fight down than to take one you know what i mean like that, that if i was to turn a fight down that eats away at me that's something i can't do if i was to miss a training session that would play on my mind i would spend more time thinking about not doing that training session then it would have taken me to get in the car drive to that training session uh push it 100 percent, and drive home so i just do it now i just do it i stop fighting it i stop doing anything like that i just um i just follow my instincts and follow that passion and kind of just ride the wave of it but for me it's easy and do you ever get, do you ever think about your legacy in terms of what you've done so far and how you're perceived by fans and the people you work with not really, not really. Like you get asked about your legacy, but it's not. Um, yeah, I've I've just been riding the wave without stopping for so long and looking up that um, there, there's so much time for that. There's so much time to to sit back on your rocking chair as an old man and and I'll be that guy at the pub in the in the corner just being like, back in my day, I was like, I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna 
be doing that for 20 years. So there's no point in stopping now and doing it. Like I've got, I've got so much time to do that. So for, oh man, I'm just, I'm just focused. Like I can't, man, it kills me. I can't, I don't understand how some of these guys just let these opportunities pass them by. You know, this, this game is so volatile. Things can happen so quickly. Imagine, nah, this, this is not the right fight for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. Next day you're at a wrestling session. Boom, blow your knee out blow it out again you, you, career's over you know what i mean like it's such a volatile sport you need to while i'm fit while i'm healthy i'm i'm good to go thank you dan how are you i'm good mate uh would you ever fight alexander volkanovsky how is your relationship with him yeah like the relationship the relationship's good. Like we're still mates. <laughs> we can still catch up, and have a beer. Um, yeah, well, I, like I said before, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. There's there's a lot of work that needs to be done between now and then. Thank you. Done yeah. Thank you, lads and ladies.